G'day everybody, Andy Ma here. Welcome to part one of the season in review of the Blueprint, proudly brought to you by our good friends at Hyundai. Nice to be back. Joining me is former champion skipper Mark McClure. Seller. Sellers. Uh, Seller. Seller. <laughs> I was thinking well, maybe that was a bit of a Freudian slip, but Couldn't not be. quite the seller dweller. But uh, no. it's been a tough season, let's be honest. It's not what mm. we were hoping for. We got off to that bad start. We never quite got yeah. our got our feet back on the ground. It was a struggle from losing that those first four games, wasn't it? They started off really fine against uh, against Port Adelaide in the first game and then they got out to an amazing start and then they just couldn't hold on for the rest of the game. Mm. And to me, I started to look at their fitness and we lost a lot of early games in the season. Uh, it took us a while to get our mojo. And I think the last six weeks were about as good as we went, yeah, I think. Yeah. you know, And they sort of found out that, that they needed a little cultural change. They changed slightly. Uh, and they worked out that they needed to actually win some contested ball. They played some kids. I thought it was great. The there last some, six weeks. There were some tight losses. And, look, if you want to look at a glass half full, you can say what might have been had a couple of these been able to be turned mm. around, particularly through that middle part of the year where we were honourable. I mean, the GWS loss was a shocker. We, and the Brisbane one. They, they were games that... The Brisbane game we should have won. There's no question about that. And there's a few that we can look back on. We're in winning positions. And mm. for one reason or another, we were unable to hold on. But I, I don't know whether that's a fair representation. If we, if we look at it, the games that we could have won and the tight losses and we think, well, but for a flip of the coin here or there, we might have been a whole lot better. I, I'm not sure we're really attap attacking the nub of where we're at as a footy club. Well, I think it comes back to understanding where you're at as a footy mm. club and understanding that in tight games, what you need to do. And I think in, in, to losing so many that were so close and some and it, and it zaps your confidence as well. And that's the biggest part of this game is being able to have confidence. And we see some, we'll put some young kids up in a minute we who actually gain some confidence through playing lots and lots of games in a row and improving themselves. So, but those six games were very important. That you either if you win if you win four of those, they're in the finals. It's an amazing yeah, no, it's difference true. in what you do. You know? just, just before we get to those kids that you talked about, and Levi Caswell will be first, but before we get to that, you mentioned cultural change. Yes. Cult what, what do you mean by that? Well, I just I, I noticed Juddy talked about it at the end of the year. He, he came in and uh, he spoke about they actually look like everyone on this field is actually pulling the same mm, way. Mm. And I like that. You know, they started to get tough on some players. They started to get harder on each other. Uh, they didn't get it at the start of the year. They thought, you just play. Well, you know, you don't just play. You actually set a standard here. And the standard wasn't, meet, wasn't met at the start of the year. Uh, and the last six weeks, I, I, I enjoyed watching them play. They were competitive. Mm. They were hard at it. They didn't win because they still don't have the nous properly to, to finish those games. Like the last game of the year, you know, a close yeah, game yeah, of the year yeah, where, yeah. where Cam, would, all they had to do was push it over the line. Yeah. And, OK, you know, that's, that's a little mistake. But those little things, that, that, that's done by good sides, done by very good sides. And, the, and, and you get better by doing that, you know, and, and your confidence rises. We can finish off a game. We can win a close game. You can do all those things if you start to get the little things right. And I thought they did in the end. In terms of all this going forward, we'll have a chat about that in a moment. Glass half full, definitely there were some players found through season 2014. Levi Casbolt, I think yeah. a lot of us have wondered where this kid was going to get his footy to. I reckon throughout this season he's played the 19 games, he's re-signed for another couple of years. Yeah. There's, I think we saw him take a pretty significant step this year. Massive. Sellers. Look at that. Like chasing tackle on a small player. That's brilliant stuff. And then his, his power marking in the forward line is outstanding. He crashes packs. He's strong. He's hard to move out of the way. And with that, his kicking improved. And yep. you can see here, look at that. I mean, he before you would go, he's 100 to 1 to kick this. Yeah. And all of a sudden now he's actually kicking goals that you wouldn't think he could kick. I so remember, I was yeah. really impressed with the way he moved forward. Robbie in the Wiley sat here yep. when, he, when we had him in. He said, we've discovered the natural arc. And yep. that, that had been sort of coached out of him from that early stage of his career and they allowed it to come back in and his kicking improved. The, the, the recruiters will tell you that if you're going to make it at this game, you're going to be elite at something. Mm -hmm. And he now knows what he's elite at. I mean, he is power in the mark. best two or three big power markers right, in the competition. And keep telling him that, make him believe it. He's, he could you know, be a real force in the next five years. You know the best years. part about it? There was other clubs after him at the end of the yeah, year. No doubt. And, I, and you know what, that's a really good sign yep. because they see what uh, we're starting to see now. Yep. Talk about good stories of 2014. I don't reckon there's a better story for Carlton than Sam Rowe. This bloke, we all know what he went through with his testicular cancer and the fight to get back and play at this level. Sells, I reckon you'd love this guy. I do. I really do enjoy his, his work. He's played on some of the big guys. Look at this bloke. He's, there's no bigger. This bloke's a, a star in cloak. So Rowe goes and but knocks him over. He plays on all the guys down back. This is the toughest job in football yeah, when, no, you're, yeah. when you're no, in a, yeah. not a great side and you've got to play at full back against all of them. Yeah. Like there's Ruffy, you know, uh, those sort of guys. They are stars of the game and, and Rowe stood up very well against him. And then all of a sudden you see him go, I've got some confidence to mark the exactly. ball now. Exactly. Yeah. I'm starting. I, I can actually play this game. Yeah. And, and that 
comes with time and, and playing those kids for, for 10 to 12 weeks in a row. Uh, and then you see a different player. All love, these kids can play. Yeah. It's just getting the opportunity. Love the combination that he and Mickey Jamison seen out. I think they really like one another. I think they, respect, they look after one another on the ground. I think they've got a really great combination going on those two I totally ways. agree. But some that Jamison, Jamison doesn't fit, Roe does. So yeah. that's where you can actually exactly. mix and match. Yeah, and they help each other out, yeah. which I reckon is fantastic. We want the next wave coming through. We need to find some more. I think every Carlton supporter knows that. But Troy Menzel is clearly one. And there was some discussion about whether he would or wouldn't, but he did. And he's recommitted for another couple of years. And smart. Isn't he's a smart player. Clever. Uh, he gets on the end of things. Everyone goes, oh, how did he get on the end of that? Yeah. Well, guess why? Because he's smarter than the yeah, other blokes around yeah. the joint. And he's got, some, he's got some, uh, some tricks, you would call them. And you need players with tricks. And uh, he's got plenty of that. He's just, he, he, look, and I actually reckon he does the hard work too. He's tough in forward and he'll get better because he's got a bit of a shoulder at the moment and all those sorts of things. This is a good finish, wasn't it? Young Dylan Buckley kicks a goal and then Menzel kicks a goal yeah. to beat West Coast yeah. that yeah. day. It was an incredible young afternoon. The kids actually set the standard. Which One of the is things that clubs who look for the next rising star coming through tend to do is put too much weight of expectation on them. Hopefully, we. We know exactly where he's at with his footy. We don't ask him to do too much too quickly as a supporter group. Certainly the people internally does won't be Does he remind that. you of Wingard? A little bit. Yeah, yeah. he does. He does. He's he got does. a bit of that about he's him. He's got a bit no, of Wingard yeah. about yeah. him. Yeah, his next progression is to get into the midfield. You've got to yeah. work himself into a fitness state so he can actually play in the midfield for periods of time. I just touch wood that the knee stands up for as long as it possibly can and hopefully for the rest of his entire There's no luck in this hopefully. game, mate. Don't say that to me, Sellers. <laughs> we need a little bit at the moment. No, stay um, Matthew Watson, again, yeah. you know, first round draft pick. We've all wondered, all Carlton supporters have wondered where Matty was going to fit in. We know he had the couple of tough initiation experiences into the AFL. This was the last game of the year, and he's kicked the four. And Yeah, I was at that game, called it on the ABC, and I was actually pleasantly surprised at his, his performance. The first mark he took in the middle. In the, in the goal square before, he actually leapt at, yeah. up in the air and, and he's a tall guy with good hands and then all of a sudden he was on the end of an easy one there but he kicked one from the boundary line and this is a good mark, good really great. good mark yeah. there against good opposition, uh, four goals in, against Essen was a terrific performance, I think they found his spot, yep. okay well, this kid can play up forward, he just needs, I reckon he needs to lose some weight, he needs to actually get himself trimmer and, and more agile well, to play I, up forward. I wonder if, if they've decided that that's the way they're going to go with him as a forward and they've prior to that being thinking key defender, you need to put bulk on to wrestle the Giants and all that sort of stuff. If no. he has put the weight on because of that, then hopefully it'll be easy enough to shed if they decide he's got to be a forward. If you're going to play against a Giant, why would you wrestle him? Well, you've got to be more agile and be able to move. Yeah, that's true. Um, I'll tell you where he becomes important, and we'll get to the list going forward in a minute, but if Jared Waite isn't going to be part of Carlton, now I think any, mm. we sit here now, we're not sure where Waite is going to place footy next year, but if Jared Waite goes... Mm. then we need another six-foot-four-something player who we can roll through the forward 50, and the mm. opportunity might just be ready to present itself to Matthew Watson. He's not uh, Jared Waite's... He's not Jared Waite. Uh, Jared no, Waite's no, an very... incredibly different player with, with, a, with a different skill set altogether. Oh, no, but Jared, still... Jared's in, a, in an interesting situation. He has a choice to pick where he wants to go to. Mm. He, he's clear and free to go. Um, he's served Carlton for a long time. You know what? Sometimes other clubs pick up players and they go, I see his good stuff. Yeah. But they don't actually see some of the other stuff he needs to do. Jared's not fit enough for mine. Jared is not hardened in, in, in how he's played. He's been able to coast through for some time. And I, ne I think the standards that have changed in the last six weeks may help him to improve next year. Well, he could be very handy for oh, this club oh, yeah. and a great one-club player. Well, I think, I think I, that's a good point for him to the stuff that Chris Judd was saying on the footy show a couple of weeks ago, I think, was really salient, you know. Yeah. And I think he wants him to stay, and he wouldn't have said what he was saying, I don't think, on that program. I want him to get fit, though. Well, I want I him to get... Because I don't reckon he was absolutely rock hard. Uh, so far, the list, and there's still some room to move on this, no question, but the list changes to this point in time, and there's a story behind all of them. Obviously, the uh, retirements and the end of the contract for Josh Bootsman for the reasons that everybody talked about at the start of the year, but the four boys who have gone off, Luke Reynolds and Jared Casher are off the rookie list, and Tom Tomei, unfortunately, just couldn't quite make it at AFL level, and Andy McGuinness has probably had yeah. too many injuries, and the advent... No, no news there, mate. No, it's all no, no news there. The thing for me is the recruiting area. We talk about the recruiting. I've also got uh, Garlett, Robinson, and Kane Lucas, who are ones who probably who are other clubs may look at. Mm. Uh, there may be more players. I mean, they may put all of them up. Who knows? And just see what, see what well, comes out of it. Who knows? But... One of the things I would love 
this club to do is let the recruiting department, because there's been a lot of talk about the recruiting department being poor. Well, let's see if they are poor, because or, or they're really good, because they haven't had a chance. So let them go and do the deals. Let, let them do the deals. Let them do the job, and let the coaching staff coach the players when they get mm -hmm. them and, and improve them to what they want. The, at this stage, we're seeing people come into clubs, take over, and say, "Well, look, I want this." Well, no, 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 no. Hang on, we've mm -hmm. got we've set this pattern. We, who is the guy who leads our recruiting? We, most people wouldn't know yeah, because looks... he doesn't get the deals to do. Yeah. It's all done for him by someone else, and that shouldn't be the case. If you employ someone to do something, let them do the job. Yep. Well, we have to get a wriggle on, but before we yep. say goodbye to part one of the season in review, you mentioned Mitch Robinson and Jeff yep. Garlett. Yep. Um, both liked, in fact, yep. probably loved by so many of their teammates and the fans alike when we've gone well. They've often played really good footy. Particularly Mitch, there's been stories about, you know, the players have said enough's enough, mm. Mitch, and unfortunately you're going to have to go mm. as a result of your indiscretions. The fact that they've put that out there, do they have to follow through now? Does Mitch Robinson have to end up playing his footy somewhere else? No. No? No, I don't. No, we that's we not can the still point. come back and. Oh, he needs to change. And they, they've sent a message to him. Either you change, but you, we don't want you anymore. So what, we don't want you anymore, says he may have to go. But all of a sudden, if they can't find a spot for him, he may come back and say, listen, I want to stay and change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's not hard to do. Yeah. It's pretty simple stuff. Uh, but, you know, he is a different sort of guy. He's a bit of a rat bag, and I, I tend to like those guys. I reckon they make a difference in your footy club about how the, how the place works and, and yep. moves around. So, yep. for mine, I think that uh, he, he probably he probably could go. Someone would like him. Someone would take him. But if he doesn't, I'd accept him back, and, and on, on on the terms that the players want, not his terms. Mm -hmm. And if he if he if he breaches any of those, just stick him in the goose for the rest of his life. Well, there's a lot of balls in the air at the moment and uh, we'll see where they all fall. Uh, that is it for... I Go like on. what they're doing, though. I like what they're taking control of the footy club. The players? I, the players? Absolutely. Yep. They're taking control of their own destiny because no one helps them out in the ground. Yep. They can have all those blokes sitting in the box. doesn't mean anything. It's when they actually do they bounce the ball and you've got to win the game yep. and it's up to you. Nice. And they take control and I think that's the best thing. Good. Let's hope it's a sign of things to come. That's it for part one of the season in review. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part two of season in review, Blueprint, where we'll preview the 2014 John Nichols Medal.